Jackie in Trouble by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Monsinger. Jackie in Trouble. As a goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect, sang Sunrise on the Iceberg. The sun rose on the iceberg. They fell very much in charge. What's happening? Blared Jackie, the penguin, greeting each. Each of his companions with a hearty slap on the back. After breakfast, the penguins went about their morning activities. Whether they were ice block building, napkin napkin folding, feather combing, or balloon dancing, Tacky was the odd bird. Then it was nap time. Nap time for all. That is, but Tacky. What a great day for surfing! He cried. Would that be fun or what? It would be a what? It would be what? Said Goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect. You're surfing if you must, but please do it quietly. So Tacky took off alone and coasted over the waves. Suddenly the wind came up, filling his shirt like a sail, and he found himself blowing. Full speed ahead out to the sea. He loved the spray of his beak and the thrill of the ride. On he sailed, and on and on through sunny days and starlit nights. But the time he finally reached land, he was standing on tippy tippy webs on an ice cube. With his little heart beating in excitement, Jackie waddled ashore, ready for an adventure. After being greeted by the strangest penguins he'd ever seen, he came upon a large gray rock. How nice! He had lots of rocks at home. Funny, thought Jackie. This rock is warm. The rock he knew were cold, and it's a little squishy. The rocks he knew was hard and sort of hairy. Hairy? He couldn't remember any hairy rocks back at on the iceberg. Jackie never could sit still for long, so he did the little rock hopping dance he'd always enjoyed doing at home. I don't need shoes and I don't need socks, just my mellow yellow feet. For hopping on the rocks, hey! I don't need shoes and I don't need socks. Just my mellow yellow feet. For hopping on the rocks, hey! I don't. Suddenly, the rock rose up, and a voice louder than any penguin's voice, louder than even Tacky's, boomed. Something is tackling my back. Before Tack Tacky could ask, "What's happening?" The rock, whose name happened to be Rocky, grabbed him, and they were crashing to, crashing through the jungle. Tacky loved adventures, but was this fun or what? He wasn't sure. Finally, Rocky came to a very great clearing, pumped Tacky out, and bellowed, "Flowers for my table!" While Tacky was puzzled, Rocky over. Was overjoyed for she had taken one look at Tacky's shirt and was convinced she had brought home the most beautiful bunch of flowers in the world. Yes, indeed, just what I needed to bring brighten up this dear, dearie old place. Let's see, I need a white vase. It's a gorgeous bunch of flowers, and but pretty thick around the steam area. After choosing her whitest face, Rocky plopped Tacky in, and he looked around. The table was set for dinner with ketchup and lemon pie and grape punch and gravy and mustard and marmalade and peanut butter and lots of other good things. Rocky, Rocky, glumped gratefully around. Around the table, singing, flowers make all the difference. Flowers make all the difference. I'm not a bunch of flowers," said Tacky. "Say what?" Rocky trumpeted. "Of course you are a bunch of flowers. Don't be silly." 
She sniffed at Tacky. You smell lovely too. Thank you," said Jackie. "But I'm not a bunch of flowers. I'm penguin." Rocky eyed Tacky suspiciously. "What's a penguin? Some sort of weird plant?" "No," offered Tacky. "It's a kind of bird." "A bird," snorted Rocky. "What a hoot! You're not like any bird I've ever seen." Tacky felt his neck feathers prickling uncomfortably. "I'm really, honestly, truly a penguin," he replied. Rocky did not want to hear this. She wanted flowers. She needed those flowers, and her girl gray home needed those flowers. If you're a penguin, prove it," Rocky demanded. Then she reached out to wish. She snatched Tacky's shirt. At least I'm keeping the pretty blossoms, no matter what. Well, unless you can convince me you're a penguin. Chucky knew he was in trouble now. His shirt was a sail, and with a, without the, his shirt, how would he get home? Would he never see goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect again? Hurry up now! I'm hungry, and I don't have all day. Snapped Rocky impatiently. Prove you're a penguin. Do something penguinish. Tacky thought it very hard. He just had to show her. Oh yes, remem. He remembers penguins march. Beginning, he began one, two, three. Stepped in the ketchup bowl without knowing it, and con- continued over the table. Four, five. Four, five, seventeen, one hundred. What else?、Uh, asked Rocky. Penguin's bla- belly slid. Tacky got a running start, skidded across a lemon pie, and swished in swirl over the tablecloth. Hmm, was where was that lemon smell coming from? Go on over. Ordered Rocky, penguins dive. Tacky took a bouldering leap up and dived a splashy cannonball into the pitcher of grape punch. Refreshing, more confused than convi- convinced, Rocky asked, "And keep going? What else? What else ha- could a penguin do?" Then he remembered what had gotten him into this situation in the first place, and he said, "Penguins are excellent hoppers." Bravely tilting his beak up in his best purple hopping form, he hopped in the gravy and hopped on the cloth and hopped on the mustard and hopped on the cloth and hopped in the marmalade and hopped on the cloth and hopped. In the peanut butter and stop. Then he waddled stickily over to Rocky. See, he shrugged. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm penguin. Rocky looked at her red, yellow, purple, brown, gold, orange, and tin tablecloth and bellowed, "What have you done to my tablecloth?" Tacky froze. He had that he had been having fun doing penguin things, and he didn't even realize that he'd make a mess. Uh oh, he thought, "I'm stuck here forever. I'll never get home to my iceberg." My tablecloth, my tablecloth, hooded Rocky. I love it. I simply love it. Look at all those. Cl- uh, Add those colors are they're brilliant, they're beautiful, and they're so much prettier than your blossoms. No offense. Here you go, you wonderful odd whatever you are. Without, she picked up Tacky's shirt and flipped in it to him. He, she also threw him a hot dog cookie and three kisses. Thank you, he trumpeted as Tacky waved goodbye. And set out for the weather, weather's edge. Water's edge. 
He leaped onto a log, thinking, "I didn't know ice ice blocks came in brown." And as his shirt caught the wind, he set sail. Meanwhile, back in the iceberg, goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect, were singing, "Sunrise on the iceberg." The sun rose, but they didn't feel in charge. Life just hadn't been the same without Tacky. Everything was so orderly, and they were tired of pe- patting each other on the back and whispering, "What is happening? Nothing is happening." Then they saw the speck in a distance. Could it be? As the speck came closer and closer, they could see it was Tacky. Goodly, lovely angel, neatly and perfect, talked Tacky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. And many miles away, an elephant sat by her. Tablecloth and thought the same thing. The end.